Hello, and thank you so much for checking out this video, or, you know, just letting autoplay do its thing. Anyway, today I'm gonna make a thing. I have not decided what this thing is called, but it's gonna be a decorative item. So I was in a supermarket and I found this thing. It's just like a, a kitchen storage pot, but I really liked the color of it and the darker wood, I thought it was a bit more unusual. And it was in the clearance section and it just, it spoke to me. And it said, uh, you could make me into something cool. And I said, okay. Anyway, eight months later, it's been sitting on my shelf and I've not been able to think of what to do with it, but I think I know what I wanna do now. I don't think it's gonna be easy, <laughs> but I'm gonna give it a try. So I'm gonna quickly show you the design, but if you wanna skip past that, I will put the timestamps below. Okay, so I've got the container like that. That's a really bad drawing, but you know, you get the gist. And then in the top, I want to have a cloud. So this is gonna be felt. And I want to have loads of things hanging down from my cloud. So in the center, I want a moon. And I think this is gonna be air dry clay. And I also want little shiny raindrops. And they're gonna be made of beads. And I want the stuff that it's hanging on to be chain, like a fine chain, so it's silvery. Um, but if that doesn't work, I might also use just like clear fishing line sort of thing. Also inside my cloud, I want to have lights. So I'm gonna put a string of LEDs inside. Now I feel like that looks like a simple design, but I don't think it's gonna be easy. <laughs> we shall see. So I have all of my materials ready to go. I'm gonna start off with my moon because that's gonna be the thing that takes the longest to dry. And I have got my air dry clay here. So let us begin. Okay, so I grabbed my clay and I'm kneading it a bit just to soften it up. And I'm gonna make a few because I'm quite out of practice to start with. And um, the first one will probably look awful. <laughs> And also I wanna give myself some options just in case any of them crack while drying. I'll have a few backups. I'm rolling it out flat, but not too much because it might curl up a bit while drying or crack if it's too thin. It will also be very delicate and could break easily. I wanted there to be some texture or patterns on the moon rather than completely smooth. So I've got some different rubber stamps that are usually used for ink to try out. This one is a bit tricky because the pattern is a square and kind of hard to match up. So. I tried a couple of times and got something sort of okay. Then I used a wooden disc as a template to cut around. Ideally, I would have used a circular cookie cutter, but I didn't have one uh, the right size, so this is fine. I used the end of my mechanical pencil, which is quite narrow, to make a hole at the top. A cocktail stick or a wooden skewer would also be a good tool for this. I have some clear stamps which are actually in a crescent shape, which I wanted to try as well, but after doing one I found that keeping the stamp in the clay while cutting it out and then peeling it off afterwards helped to keep the imprint looking neater. Once I'd cut them all out, I then dipped my finger in some water to smooth out the edges and just make them all a bit neater. So I did a few like that and I was finding it really hard to get a nice shape. Sometimes the simpler the shape, the more difficult it can be to get right. And I feel like this is definitely one of those times. So I was kind of thinking that they were looking a bit big and I wanted to try something a bit smaller. So I decided to try and mold some rather than cut them out. So I just played around with the clay and sort of ended up with these thicker, rounded, chubbier moons. And I think I kind of prefer those ones. They're just a bit smaller. I don't want to say dainty because they're thick, <laughs> but somehow they feel cute and small. I've done all of those and hopefully one of them work, will work out. So I'm gonna move on to doing the internals for this one. So everything that's gonna be hanging down needs to attach to the top, but I don't wanna put it straight into the wood because I think that's gonna be a bit tricky. So I'm going to use a piece of foam board to attach everything. I'm gonna have some Velcro to it so it can be removable because this is also where the battery pack for my lights is going to be located inside and it needs to be accessible so that I can change batteries if they run out. So let's go. 
So I'm drawing around the lid of my pot and cutting out my foam board with a craft knife. Then I am marking around the LED battery pack so I can cut that chunk out and it can then easily slot in. This foam board is practically the same thickness as the battery pack so it is perfect for hiding it and will also provide a solid base for the rest of my project. Okay so the next thing I'm doing is felting the cloud and um, <clears throat> I've never done needle felting before. It's, you know, it's great just to throw yourself in at the deep end, you know. I'm sure I'll work it out. I'm starting off at this part by cutting out a circle of pre-made white felt. And this is going to be my base that I will build the cloud up onto. I tried to start cutting it out with the wrong scissors and that was not working, so fabric scissors are much better. I've got some off-white felting wool and I'm going to use it to construct my lumpy cloudage. When you felt like this, you stab your needle through the wool and into your base fabric and it pulls the fibres through so they kind of weave together. But obviously when you're doing that you have to stab your tool all the way through and if you have something underneath that is another fabric then it will weave it to that as well. But if you have something hard underneath, then the needles won't go all the way through and also it will start to damage the tips of your needles and they'll be blunt and broken. So you can buy special brushes to do this with. When I was in the shop, they had them with all the needle felting stuff and I mean, they weren't super expensive, but I was like, well, I don't want to buy one when I know I've got a brush at home. So I just grabbed this one and hoped it was going to work. It's just um, a brush for like removing lint from jackets and stuff. It's really old. I've had it in my house for absolutely ages. It works absolutely fine. I'm beginning my cloud by wrapping a piece of felt into a little ball. I'm going to start off small and build up. This part isn't going to be that neat because I'm just building the structure of the cloud to start with. So I'm literally just stabbing all over the wool balls to attach it to the felt. I was really surprised at how quickly it worked. The felting tool I got has three needles in it, which obviously makes it a lot speedier than if I was using just one. And yeah, the brush underneath is, is working out fine. The process is very satisfying, but I did feel at any moment that I might stab myself and it was going to really hurt, especially with three needles, but somehow I did manage to avoid that the whole project. <laughs> so I kept building the shape by layering different size balls of wool to reflect the uneven nature of the clouds. As I got a few more layers on, I started to felt more heavily around the edges of the balls and less in the middle to create the puffiness of the cloud. So now it was starting to take shape and I was going to try and felt in the fairy lights. I really was not quite sure how to go about it and I just placed the LED where I wanted it, put some more wool over the top and carried on felting. I didn't really change my technique other than just trying to avoid the wire a bit. I had absolutely no idea if it was going to work but you know astonishingly it did. I could feel the needles hitting the wire occasionally but I wasn't pushing hard and I think the needles just kind of passed around the wire without too much trouble. There didn't seem to be any damage to either of the items. I kept going like that for a bit before deciding the string of lights was too long and I would end up with too many lights in a small area. And also there would be so much wire it would get difficult for the needles to pass through. So I decided to take the lights back out and start again, but halfway down the string the first half of the string will be bunched together and sit between the felt base and the foam board. The light from them should still help to create a warm glow from the top of the cloud then. So I just removed what I'd done already and started again from halfway down the string and did exactly the same thing, building up the felt balls around the LEDs and the felting action just holds all the wires in place. I apologise this is not the best camera angle, I kept blocking it with my hand but hopefully you can see what's happening.
When I had covered all of the lights and the wires, I then just used a really thin layer of the felt to kind of smooth over everything and make it look like one cloud rather than lots of individual white balls. <laughs> the thought did cross my mind that I might be inadvertently creating a fire hazard because light usually equates to heat and obviously those lights are embedded in potentially flammable fibers. But the voltage of these lights are so low that it's very unlikely to generate enough heat for that to happen. But just to be on the safe side, I won't leave this unattended when it's on. Okay, so that actually worked. <laughs> what? Oh my god. I actually... Yeah, I can't believe it actually worked the way I thought it was going to in my head. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Yay! You know when you kind of feel like you might be over-engineering something? Yeah, this might be one of those times, but I'm hoping it's going to turn out okay. Okay, so the next thing to do is to attach the raindrops um, with chains. Whether that's going to work or not, I don't know. Um, obviously, I can't pass a chain through this felting, and I want them to hang out of it. So I'm going to try and pass through some thread with the chain tied onto the end. Let's see if this works. I started by marking out on the back where I wanted everything to hang from, just to get a general idea, not expecting it to be exact. The moon will be in the middle and there'll be about six to eight raindrops around that. I have some old bracelets and a few broken chains to use to hang the beads on. And I've got two different beads I wanted to use, one with a smooth, clear blue glass finish and one that's all faceted and sparkly. The next thing to do was attach the beads to the chain. The hole was at the top of the blue beads, which was a bit annoying as I didn't actually have any suitable fixings for it. And then ended up using some wire, but I didn't have any silver wire. So I had to use this very thin, fine wire, which um, is kind of purpley, but I only needed a little bit, which thankfully isn't too visible. Again, I'm sorry about these camera angles. It's so small and fiddly. I just couldn't quite get the right angle and my hands kept getting in the way. So hopefully you can still see I looped the wire around the end of the fine silver chain and twisted to keep it on and then cut the chain. I wanted all the raindrops to be at different lengths. So I was just being random with the chain length and not doing any specific measuring. Then to attach the chains, I used white cotton thread to tie a knot in the top link of the chain and then threaded that onto the needle. Then I looked for one of the marks on the back of the felt and just passed the needle up through the cloud from the bottom. So then I just secured it to the top by pulling it tight and doing some back stitches in the felt to hold it in place. There was that tail of the end of the thread hanging down and in hindsight, I probably should have just done a double thread and passed it up through. But anyway, I didn't want to cut that tail off just in case the knot then came undone at the top of the chain. So I just threaded it onto the needle and passed it up through the same spot as the other thread and then trimmed it off. For the next one, I used a slightly chunkier chain. It's still delicate, but I thought it would be cool to bury the chains as well as the beads. And as I have it, why not use it? The faceted beads are slightly different and a little bit easier. So they have a hole at the bottom going to the top. Uh, so I used a bead pin to thread up through and attach straight to the chain. I used some jewelry pliers to trim the pin and then bend it round to create a loop at the top. Once that was done, I attached it to the cloud in exactly the same way. Okay, so my clay moons are dry now and I just have to pick the one that I want and then sand it down and paint it. I think the bigger ones, although they're cool, I'm not sure, I'm not sure I really want them. I think the little smaller chubbier ones are kind of maybe what I want to go for. I did one with some of the impressions into it and then some without. So I think probably one of these two they're kind of smaller and cuter. I think the other ones are probably a bit too big, but I'll keep them and maybe use them for something else. So I've just got some fine sandpaper and I'm gonna neaten them up a little bit. Okay, so I smoothed the moons off a bit with the sandpaper and then got to painting. I couldn't decide between silver or the sort of champagne gold color I had. I started with silver, but the tube I had was so old it came out like cottage cheese. 
but I did manage to find another one which was fine. It looked nice but it wasn't super metallic so then I tried the champagne gold. It was a watercolour so I was concerned that it would make the clay soggy again but it was actually fine and I really love that colour so that ended up being the one I decided to use. I decided on the floral printed moon and started off by finding a jump ring large enough to accommodate the thickness of it. If you've not done jewellery making before, the best way to open and close a jump ring is to twist it so that it doesn't lose its circular shape and so that the ends join back up neatly again. I added the chain, closed the ring and then trimmed the chain. Then I just attached it to the cloud in exactly the same way as the water drops but right in the centre. Once that was in there, I decided the LEDs needed to be secured, so I did that by doing a few rough back stitches and just holding it all in place on the top of the cloud. Okay, so once that was done, I had to attach the cloud to the foam board somehow. Initially, I thought I would just hot glue it, but then I was worried that covering all the LEDs with the glue might affect them in some way. I don't know if it would, but it just didn't feel like a good idea. So I decided to stitch the two layers together. Although foam board is thick, it's not very dense, so a needle can pierce it really easily. It was a bit of a fiddle to stitch the two together, but actually I'm really glad I did it that way. It's kind of hard to tell from looking at it, but the two pieces were just really well secured and fitted so neatly together. I actually don't think that the hot glue could have done the same job. Anyway, then came the bit that I was thinking was going to be really tricky, which was hiding the edge of the foam board. I was right, it was really tricky. <laughs> I tried to add more felt into the cloud so that it covered the side and it just wasn't really working so I ended up gluing strips of wool to the edge and then felting in the loose bits. It was tricky and messy with the glue. I think a better way of doing it would have probably been to stitch on a thin strip of the pre-made white felt and then felted a bit more of the wool onto the top of that and it probably would have looked a lot better. After that glue had dried, all that was left to do was to attach it all to the lid. When I started, I thought I was going to use Velcro to attach it, but when I tested it out, that actually left quite a visible gap between the cloud and the lid. So I actually decided to glue it straight onto the lid. The gap that I'd cut out for the battery pack meant that it could just slide in and out easily if needed, so there was no problem there. And yeah, I think it just looked better and was easier to do it that way. And that's it, all finally done. It's finished! Woo! I think I was so engrossed in the process of making that when it was finally finished I was a bit like, huh, well that's done. <laughs> and I didn't really have any strong feelings towards it but now I've slept on it and got some distance from it I really love it! I think it's so cute, it looks so pretty and shiny in the sunlight, then in the dark, it's really warm and magical. 
It's actually really hard to film because it's so reflective, so I'm not sure the footage does it full justice, but yeah, I really like it. I think it came together really well, especially considering I've never done needle felting before. It's really satisfying and it takes shape a lot quicker than I was expecting, so I definitely want to do some more projects with felting in again. I think if I were doing this project again, I would probably spend a bit more time on the moon, making the moon a bit neater. It's still really pretty, but I think it's definitely a little rough around the edges. I haven't done anything with clay in a long time and I'm definitely out of practice. I think I would also maybe try and find a better way of hiding the uh, foam board layer right at the top. I did end up leaving the top blank. I think it is quite a nice canvas. I could definitely do something on there, but I'm just really not sure. No design ideas were coming to me, so maybe some point in the future I'll do something if I can think of something cool. I still don't really know what to call it. It's very magical and whimsical. Maybe something like pot of magic, a jar of magic, pot of whimsy. If you do have any suggestions for what this could be called, please leave them in the comments. Anyway, this little pot of whimsy will be taking up residence on my bookshelf. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you want to see more arts and crafts and bujos. Thanks so much. Bye.